welcome back to another video. It's uh, nice and bright here in Devon at the minute. It wasn't this morning, it was raining and cold and wet and horrible. God. Anyway, today's video, what are we doing? So, if you saw the last video, the Pottinger demo, um, you would see me mention the fact that I was making a front box for the uh, tractor. So we've got the 155 there with the link arms down. Um, I've got a headstock here. So this came off an old um, silage pusher that we used to use to push up some silage. Um, you can see where these brackets used to be here. Just had to make them a little bit wider to uh, accommodate for the arms on the front of the tractor. So that's the headstock. I'll show you what else I'm planning on using here. So we've got this old spray frame. It used to be a little Hagee sprayer. Um, the headstock actually fits perfectly between this and there, so that'll weld in there beautifully. It's got an air tank on the front. It's got a lead for lights. And it's got these bars with all these holes cut out that I can mount some lights on. So, um, so that's the general plan we're going for. Um, I got some lights that I wanted to use for something else, but actually they turned out they're not good for what I wanted them for. Um, so they'll fit on the front of there really well. Right, so we're all ready for welding. These are just tacked on at the minute. Um, on the corners um, just so that if I wanted to change it I could just whack it off which I did I had to change it by about five or six mil so we'll weld them up properly I haven't ever done any welding before I started working here but I don't think that's too shabby. I'm more than happy with that one. That's filled in that gap beautifully. So um, obviously this bit will be a bit harder because we've got to build up the gap. So we'll have a go at that. And on that side as well. So it's all welded there and there and along the bottoms. I'm going to have a go at building up and filling in the gap in there. And also there, that one's slightly bigger. Probably see better from this way. My yellow finger behind that gap. So we'll have a go at building that up. All right, guys, I've just finished welding this up. Now, it's not the prettiest looking welding, but it will be effective. Um, the bits I'm really proud of is the bits that you'll be able to see when it's on the machine. So these ones are really nice along here. Um, this side got a good weld there. And a nice pretty one along there. The, um, these bits aren't quite so good. And in here, because I had to make up a lot of that because there was a hole. Same there, but um, it'll do the job. It's holding it on there. So we'll go and uh, test fit it on the tractor and see what it looks like. Right, there it is on the tractor. Obviously the top link might need something to do in to um, make it so it's a bit more level. Otherwise he's crowded back all the time, but it's all right, not a bad thing. So of course we can just extend that out um, a bit more if we want to. I just don't like having the link extended too much, but um, that's all right like that. So we're ready to tack this on. So I spent a lot of time grinding all this off. You see there's a fair gap in there. So like Craig said, um, just now, just in case of tacking it and then building it all up with some weld. Same on the inside there. So we'll uh, tack it in place, go from there. Tack 
in there. Tack in there. Try and weld them up. Right, we're making progress. Um, as I'm going, I'm figuring out how to weld a bit better, which is nice. So I've managed to fill the gap pretty well in here, got a couple of little holes. I'll grind that back and give it another final nice weld. Same story on the other side. Got that pretty well welded up, just a couple of little holes. Again, I'll grind it back and fill it up. So um, I'm quite fortunate that John and Craig are happy to teach me how to weld, because as I say, I've never done any before. But I always give it a go. So what we're going to do is flip the thing upside down and try and weld the insides a bit because I can't get to them where I am. sort of packing up here now for the evening. I have welded all the frame on. Again, my welding's not the best, but it'll hold. It's all on there. So now I'm just in a bit of a thinking stage as to what to do next. Um, obviously it's got the big gap in the middle that would suit having a toolbox or something in it. Making some sort of lid for these side bits because they'd be handy to have individual bits in. Um, I've got some lights, like I said, that I'm either gonna mount on here or on the front down here, um, we'll just see, and yeah, I think it'll be quite a useful thing, sort of thing, if you go spraying you can take some spray review because we got water bowsers on sort of the three main sites where we keep animals and crops and that, so put your sprays in there to take with you, obviously carry a lot more tools, spare parts when you go mowing, you get all your blades um, and the impact guns and that sort of thing and yeah, I think it'll just be really handy, obviously it's got the air tank, in fact it's got air as well, you need to pump up some tyres or maybe put an air horn on, who knows. Need to make some form of frame for it as well because he sits obviously a bit low to the ground to pick up where he is but you can always set it down on a pallet or something. So um, might just stick it on the tractor a minute and see what he looks like. So it turns out that ink arms do very nearly go low enough. I, um, I just dragged him into position there. Not quite, let's just um, put the top link on a minute. We'll just lift him up as high as go. When he's there, the top link wants to be pulled in a lot. There he is, look. How about that? That's pretty cool. Just imagine it with some lights on it on the front. Fairly rigid. The only thing now is when I let him down, he'll tip forward. Or backwards even, he'll tip backwards. Which isn't ideal, but we'll find somewhere to unhook him on the level. I'll just go and get the lights and I'll show you what they're like. Right, I had to change the battery. So, these are the lights I got. I ordered four white LED spotlights. And if you see, they've got a third wire. You can change them on a switch to go to amber. They actually sent me eight and they actually sent me red and blue, which is not ideal because I can't use them really for what I want. So, <clears throat> obviously they were going to be beacons. So I'm thinking these have got brackets on them. 
either put them on the forks like this, maybe high and low, or some up here, some down here. If I take the third wire out that changes them from white to uh, red and blue, then I'll, I'll not get in trouble because they won't change. But I think that's the plan. I think perhaps two in the middle, one there and there, and one up there. And same on the other side. Yeah, I've got the lights, so I might as well use them. Should I put the tractor in the shed for the night? The other thing that's handy is obviously you can see the front forks um, when you're in the tractor cab here, so you know exactly where the front of the machine is. So with some of these on the front, I think that'll be ideal. Nice work lights when um, whenever we're working late. I might even mount a couple on the mower, on the front mower, but um, but we'll see. But for now, guys, I think that's it. This will be uh, part one of this finish. We'll film part two when I complete it. Obviously, I'll paint it all green as well when we're finished. But um, anyone that's got any ideas what they'd like to see in there or across the front there, let me know. I might put a plate on the front with the JM Farming logo on, just for, you know, a bit of advertising. But yeah, she's looking good in the shed. If you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel. Give the video a thumbs up. That would be awesome. Check out all the links in the description. And I'll see you guys on another video very soon. Cheerio.